Welcome to Talking Art. I'm Jane Treger, and we're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank, continuing our interviews with local artists. Today we have Dale Schwartz. Dale, thank you for coming. Oh, Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Good. Thank you. So we're going to find out a little bit about your journey. And the first thing I'm going to ask you before we look at all this art is, how did you get to this area? I'm assuming you're not local. I'm not local. I came to this area because I fell in love with a wonderful man, and he lived here. And he lives here. <laughs> we are, and we're married to each other. That was 36 years ago. Was it a good move for you, besides the marriage? Do you like this area? I love this area. I love this area. I, I moved here from Salem. I was living on the water, and it was beautiful. And uh, Is that where you're from, from Salem? No, I grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey, which was great because New York, right you there, York museums. At your, at your feet? It, was, yes. it was just a wonderful place to uh -huh. have access to. Um, and this area is uh, a mecca of beauty. Mm -hmm. I love living here. It's hard to think about living anywhere else. In Salem, though, you already had your profession. You were yes. an adult. Yes. And you were, teaching in, you were teaching art in school, right? I was. I was teaching art in the Salem Public Schools, kindergarten through eighth grade. So is that yeah. what you studied at school? Well, yes and no. That's, it's, How uh, about the, the yes part? Let's start with the, the yes, yes part. The yes part is I studied um, early childhood education and psychology. I took a lot of classes. Actually, it was a Jungian psychologist who I studied with for, uh -huh. for over a year. And um, because I was always interested in art and had always made art since I was a young child, I took many, many art classes. And um, I had always wanted to use art, work with people using art. And the field of art therapy wasn't known then. And so. It wasn't? No, this was, no, not when I when graduated. When did the field of <laughs> art therapy actually sort of begin? Well, it began actually in the 40s or, you know, the 30s. But it wasn't known in a, in a very uh, popular public way. So, uh -huh. as in, my parents didn't know. <laughs> I see. That's that's a good measure and of how things are known or not. Right. Right. My parents, you know, and guidance counselors who were, you know, directing students. So, at any rate, I, I took many art classes, and um, it turned out I had enough credits to become an art teacher. So it was wonderful. I had a wonderful experience working with about 250 kids each Which week, age? Uh, kindergarten through eighth grade. Oh, that's a big span. It was a big span. But at the early ages, you're really working only in art, I would say. Yes. Right. Yes, only in art. And it was a lot about their uh, helping to bring forth their, their creativity, their expression. So were you making art yourself during this time? Yes. Separate from what was happening in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh huh. Yeah, I and, was. And what kind of art were you doing then? Uh, I was doing drawings. Um, I think I was doing off loom weaving at that time. Oh. I, I, throughout my life, I've always been engaged in different kinds of, of art making. Um, and um, it said here I, in, your, in my notes, you said you we were arts and crafts summer counselors for special needs kids. Yes. So you needed to know how to do all these different things. I, I did. It was it was how I played. You know, it was one of the forms of uh -huh. play with uh -huh. myself and, and my friends. It looks to me like you're still playing. You're having fun. Exactly. Yes. Good. <laughs> yes. Good. So we have in front of us and behind us and between us a few pieces that we're going to discuss. Okay. So let's let's look at some of the earlier pieces. Okay. Wh wh which is that? Um, so I really I think I brought pieces maybe from the last 15, 18 years. I uh -huh. didn't bring you know a lot of. I, I used to work. I, on is this one of the earlier ones here? This is one of the earlier ones. The ones with the the blue woman there. Yeah, the blue woman. Well, this is, is she called, lying? She's she lying, lying down because it's called "Woman Being Attacked by To-Do List." Oh so, dear! Yes, many I know of this. Us, yeah, I, many of us can identify man or woman with this. Uh huh. Uh, one day, I'm sitting at my desk and feeling overwhelmed by my to-do list. Uh, I grab up some of the to-do lists and I run to my studio because often, as we, many of us have learned, when we're feeling totally overwhelmed the best thing to do is something else for at least an hour because then we're not turning our wheels. Uh -huh. uh, so I did this. I did this. And out of this came, um, this was part of the spark for me to start the Women's Creativity Retreats. 
The women's women's creativity retreats, retreats, which I lead four times a year, and I've done that for the last uh, about sixteen Amherst? years. It's actually at our studio in Leverett. Are you in the Leverett Crafts and Arts mm -hmm. building in Leverett, Massachusetts? Yes. And I have to say that when I feel overwhelmed, the best thing I can do is to make a to-do list, get it out <laughs> of my head, and put it onto a piece of paper. <laughs> then I can relax, but I, c I also get to this point where there are a pile of to-do lists. Yeah, well, I think it was you know uh, one too many of them at that point. Yes, it looks like one too many, maybe more than one too many. <clears throat> there's stuff written on her as well, is that correct? Um, well, there's letters, yeah, to-do. Uh, what to do today, I think that's to do, to do, looking to over do, here at it, to do, to do, you know, and so much of our life is about to do, to do, to do, and it's about, you know, often just stopping, and I think art for me and for many people, expression is a way to have a different way of, of interacting um, with ourselves so is, and with the this world. Is, this is drawing, painting, collage. Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are we Mixed continuing media. in the, it looks to me like we're continuing in the collage world here. Yeah, so um, my work is I'm not is sure really what varied. I'm looking at here. Is this, uh, what's, what should we call that? What, uh, is, what is it called? Does it have know, a title? You know, I think it's, I don't know that it has Untitled. a title. I did a series of these collages um, with different kinds of texture. So some of my work is autobiographical, like this first piece I just spoke about, and some I get moved by materials. Um, so I'm not and looking, this is, this, is, this is not representational in any it's way. Not, it's, it's not, it's does, not. It doesn't um, necessarily be, evo it's not evocative from it the story. It evokes the story for me, though. Really? Oh, yes. What? No, but no, that, that's not, <laughs> we're interviewing you today, not me. It's always <coughs> interesting to hear people's hey, projections way, about I'll tell you work. afterwards. Okay, great. F so tell me what your intent was here. So, I, and I think that's one of the things that's really interesting. Um, sometimes what I do, and it's in the realm of play and spontaneity around my expression, is I don't have an intent. I will gather materials that I'm attracted to, whatever I'm intrigued with, uh -huh. and let them fall upon the paper. And I play with moving them around uh, in ways that are pleasing or that have contrast. Or And these, there's a lot of texture in this particular one. Yes. So the... It's the, the intent is to have the pleasure of, of playing with the material world. So you have a studio where you keep various and sundry stuff. Lots of various and sundry stuff, not only for myself, but for the, the people who come to our oh, retreats. Oh, I see. I see. Also. So it's the same space. Yes, it's the same space. Great. You have it all space. there. And <clears throat> is this also untitled? Um, yeah, I probably gave it a title, but I don't remember. It's it's um this little blue and yeah blue small. I, I don't I don't remember the title if I gave it a title. Often and I and it's do also them. it's a, in the same company in the here. It's in the same company, and oftentimes I like to work small, because it really it's a way of focusing, uh, and art for me, as I mentioned, is is often a form of meditation, um, and uh, being able to have that kind of really direct focus on the colors, the intensity of the colors and the shapes and Is the this forms. all a collage? It is a collage. Okay, so yeah. you had these pieces of paper or whatever this stuff is. Or I, or I create them. Or I'll you create take them, them from other pieces of my artwork or, yeah, pieces that I've cut up from something else. Well, I think that one's evocative also. I'm even going to venture forth here. There's a sort of a, a, a portal that you're walking mm. through. You're going into something over there that's at the end of it. It's that, very, very lovely. Well, it's interesting you say that because a portal is one of the symbols and images that I work with frequently. Okay, so I did well, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you've moved over here. This is watercolor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's as obvious as can be. These are irises yep. on a, in a field. It could be around here someplace. Did you? Was this part of a series? Was there um, more than one of these? Well, yes. There's there's a few of them. Yes, that I've done, and actually, it it could look like it's a field, and that's fine. It can or be maybe it's a lake. Like it. it was actually in Wellfleet by the water. It's oh. a place where I love to paint, uh -huh. and one of my favorite things to do is to sit outside in in the in the beauty of nature, mm -hmm. and paint. Just sit in it and take it. And in. again, it's a very really small scale. Often it's larger than that. It depends on the time frame I have. So you, you go around always with some s pad of paper and some watercolors or something with you? Yeah, often, well, often I go with the intention of going to paint. I see, so, I see. Yeah. I see. 
So <clears throat> we've gone from this personal therapy <laughs> over here uh <-huh. laughs> uh, to an expression of shapes and, and, and forms that are meditative in a different way, now to nature, and we continue mm -hmm. here. This one I know is a part of a series. I've seen four yes, of them. Yes, I've done maybe about 30 of these. 30? Of these, at least. You, you had one of these in one of our earlier shows. Yes. From the same series. Correct. Was it the yeah. same, uh, what is it called, a cusp of trees? Ca mm. Ah, there's a word I'm missing. A, a group of trees. It, it was is. the same group of trees it's each time? It's the same family of trees. And these are the trees that are behind. This is the view from my studio window. Oh, you're a lucky person. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I feel really blessed to have well, the studio and the view. Um, What's the medium here? The medium is oil pastels. And then I've worked and scraped into it. It's sort of developed some different ways of working with oil pastels. Uh, oil pastels. Oil pastels, mm -hmm. right. And I've uh, drawn in each season. I, I mean, oftentimes it will be, um, you know, I'll look out the window and there it is, and I'll just start another one because th they're, I gravitate toward them and they're beautiful all the time, regardless of the season. Does, does any of this, does, does this fit into the same period of yeah, time? Yeah, I would say, um, no, this is, I would say, this is earlier. Um, this is when I was working with pastels which occasionally I do. I'm sorry, it's moving. I shouldn't be touching it. I think, uh, well, this is about being inspired by beauty. Right. By flowers. So pastels, uh, chalk pastels. These are chalk pastels. And these, these are oil, oil pastels. pastels. The feeling is very different. Yes. There's an there's a intensity here mm -hmm. that is uh, very attractive. OK, now this over here is quite different. Yes. But it sort of it reflects back a little bit here somehow. These, back these to the are more first of the autobiographical pieces. Well, you know, I'm, my training is as a, an art therapist. Mm -hmm. and As a Jungian, even. Well, I, I didn't train as a Jungian. I happened oh. to study <laughs> with I a see. man okay. who, for a year who <coughs> was, but it's quite different. OK. Um, and a therapist. So these are pieces that I created over the last, um, I guess, year, year and a half. You sacrificed your address book. This is not, this address book is my mother's address book. Uh -huh. My parents passed away, both of them, last year. And my mother's address book, which is, people don't have address books so much now. It was, I've always thought of it as a work of art. She was, she had so many friends and she was very social. And I would look at her address book and it was the history of, you know, I think this, she had this for 55 years or 60 uh -huh, years, this uh -huh. one, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, when, um, towards the end of their life, I wanted to do something to, to honor them. Um, I think it was shortly after, you know, my mom passed away, I did this one. And it has pictures of our family. Um, and uh, also, the phone is my grand parents' phone that they actually had in their house. We have that phone in our house. And it has the phone number from that from New that? Jersey, Essex, zip, you know, that, there well, were how no, What's the number? Uh, I don't remember. It wasn't ours. Oh, it was, oh, it was your grandparents. Yes, right. but uh, it, it, there wasn't any area. I think a lot of us remember our early phone numbers. Well, that I do remember, but this wasn't in our house. This is not house. that. And because uh, my mom used to call me all the time, and she would get on the phone, and she'd say, hi, Dale. I was just thinking about you. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so lovely. So it's called. Yeah. So there uh, she is. Yeah. She's our, that's a beautiful homage. Mm. And it's three-dimensional. Yes, yes. it's right. three-dimensional. It's an assemblage. And um, many of my works, like this one, is an assemblage. And is this, can we, should we talk about this? Sure, text? we can. Then I can okay. back and speak about that one. So this one is um, called Home. Home. Yes. I created my home. Yes. And with the help of? A nest. The nest, right. Yes. So um, yeah, home is very sacred and important roof to me. And it's a got, nest. It's got all the things you would need. It's very, right. it's cozy. Yes. And less cozy, you know, my, my home of origin was a little less cozy. So I yes. wanted to make a So really you painted the inside, so we're inside of branches of a tree. Yes. But you put it in a house. Can you tell us why you? 
came to why do I this. put it in the house? Yeah, why is, um, why'd you do this whole thing? I, I did this whole thing because I wanted, well, it was like a house. It was a house for the, a nest is one kind of house, but I wanted more of that kind of sanctity and safety of being surrounded. So it was like, you know, walking into a very luscious, nature-like room. And then the bird is sitting up here, really enjoying the view. And, and, the, and the eggs are The eggs are, are It's about potentiality. Green. The eggs are green. I painted the eggs. About are these little pieces happen. of Fimo or clay or something? These actually were a part of a necklace I bought in Oaxaca, Mexico. We used to run and lead workshops there. Good reuse. And uh, then I painted those. And I think this box, this box was a box I had long ago from crayons, when crayons came in wooden boxes. I can, I'm starting to imagine your studio. <laughs> it's full of stuff. It's, it's very organized and full of stuff. Very it's organized. It's a big playroom. Uh-huh, big playroom. Oh, I'm a little jealous. Yeah, you got to come. Okay, come play okay, sometime. Okay, So, um... I can talk I about this one. This one this is a symbol. It's a different kind of assemblage. This one is in the show right now, in the black yes. and white and red all over yeah. show. So this is how I felt while I was writing the book that I wrote on coaching. I do coaching both uh, locally and for people around the country, personally and professionally, and with executives and, and leaders, um, people who are doing really wonderful things in the world. And so um, I spent many, many hours feeling like my brain was hooked up to the computer called How to Write a Book. Um, and I was, my brain was filled with you know, 20,000 20, words and grammar and it was an incredible creative process to be engaged in because continuously it'd be coming up against um, how to resolve something, how to, and it was so with much words. like, with words, but it was also so much like anything engaging, and when we engage in the creative process, and problem solving, decision making, how we make choices. Um, so I couldn't wait to be, uh, have time to go back to my studio and create something that expressed how I was feeling in that, uh, in that process. So, uh, so in that well, sense, this is this is this is very very close proximity, close cousin to the first one we saw, yes. which is a direct response to how you're feeling. Right. Yeah. I don't know that all uh, artists or many artists actually do that. I think that's very unique. Well, you know, you know I don't. Many I people agree. will say, "Oh, that's a beautiful view. I'm going to paint that mm -hmm. view." That's not a question of. What do I feel like inside? Right, right. right. Well, and I think, you know, it, as Picasso has said, every painting is a self-portrait. So, yes, we may not think that way, but it can also be that way in some way. And I think that's one of the things that happens when people, like when women come to the Women's Creativity Retreat, um, you know, often people will come and say they want to, you know, create something that is about their own inner expression, even if they've never made art before. Um, and then sometimes it is about that they want to work on a particular project. But uh, we all have the capacity, we all have the ability to express ourselves, um, whether it's through art, whether it's through writing, whether it's through music, whether it's through how we organize um, a gallery or our closets, um, how we uh, create teams, effective teams. We all have that capacity, and, and the way I think about creativity is very broad in that way. Well, I'm, I'm thinking back at your studio now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's all this stuff. Mm -hmm. How did you create this? You didn't happen to have this. Well, I did happen to have that. And you happen to have this? <laughs> yes, that's my face. Well, um, why did you happen to have a, a <laughs> I face? Had because for, um, for 20 years, uh, we ran the New England Art Therapy. Uh, we founded, and my husband and I, Guillermo Cuellar, founded the New England Art Therapy Institute in 1981. New England? Art Therapy Institute. Art Therapy Institute. Yes. And we ran workshops about, we gave around 30 different kinds of workshops around uh, personal development and the creative process and art therapy. And one of them was a week-long intensive uh, called Gateways to Creativity. And part of it, we had people making masks and really birthing their creative selves. And that was one of the masks. And, but people would end up embellishing them. And that was um, one that I did. Did you leave a little hole to breathe? 
Um, or does it work very fast? <laughs> there's actually a hole. Yes, there's a you can there's a hole as you leave, you leave space by your nose, and then after I I covered that. I see. Yeah. So you just happen to have this. On. So I did happen but to I have it. I understand that too. I have things <laughs> hanging around and then they come into <laughs> use, right? And here you found just the right connections. And here you have these pieces, the box you had around, the necklace you weren't wearing anymore, or maybe decided yeah. to. And then I made this, the bird. This, this, this piece of tin or whatever. Yeah, copper. this piece of tin, I, I don't even remember where I found it, but it was so beautiful. Um, I think it, it looks like it determined, I don't know, we don't have a, a side view of it. Let me turn it a little bit. You want me to help you? Hey, why is it stuck? I don't know. Oh, oh it's on the rubber. Oh, yeah. So you see that the side has the uh, oxidation of copper, the green color. Yes. Was that natural, or do you? No, it was natural. Right. It may have been from a gutter. Right. So, so you've got this green, and now mm -hmm. look at the eggs. That so, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling that you you picked up this color here mm -hmm. and transferred it to the eggs here, and the and the bird. I don't know about the bird. I can't. Well, it's kind of gold, and there's some gold in the eggs. Yeah, it's the golden bird. Right. So. Um, what are, you, what are you working on now? So currently, I'm working on a series about death and transformation. Uh, and this has come out of, again, my, my personal experience of uh, seeing uh, my parents' demise over the last number of years and being with them in, in their dying and death process. So this... Um, you know, I, I really felt moved to express the feelings that I was having and to honor their passing and to think about death, my own death, death of others around me. Um, it's something we often push so, aside. So, and so finding the beauty in death? This is finding the beauty is in this death. Do you have more than one piece? Is this I have like more than one. A I series, have a series that yes. That you're working on here. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have, I think there's maybe four or five, and I have another one that I'll be starting. What, so do I see a tombstone there, sort of? It, yeah, I, you know, it, yes, it could, what, it's what this is sort of the, the image of the, a tombstone. What is the piece that I see on the bottom right? On the right, I think it says transformation, uh -huh. because death is really, we transform into, it's a, it's a change, a transformation. Of from one state of being to another, and whatever happens. And then I also have the um, the song, the prayer, which is the Shema, which is the Jewish prayer that um, uh, it's the the prayer that I'm not people close say, enough to see. Yeah, Where is it? It's to the right, Abo it's above that little right. plaque. Above the plaque. Yeah. Um, it's people would like for it to be the the last words they would say. Belief in God. Belief in God. And again, as in they're nature. dying. Mm -hmm. These are not the trees from outside your property. They, uh, are, they are from in your head, I think. They are for the trees, and, and yes. Uh -huh. But I've been doing tree. I had been doing this series all along with these forty trees, other trees. Trees, Tree, yeah. trees are, are all wonderful. of the all of the ones you're working on involving trees. Um, a lot of them, and then there's some others that are involving actually um, a um, a shack that's been deteriorating. And I've been driving, as I've been driving around, I've noticed this shack. And it's beautiful. I've been I drawn think, to it. Th thinking it might be a shack I keep seeing, too. It's on Moody Bridge Road. Oh, no. In Amherst. Uh-huh. Uh, so I just began photographing it in every season. And then you paint it, or do you some, do something with the photographs? Well, oh, we, we haven't talked. Is photo, photography part of your work? Not, not so much. No. Early on, it was. When I was in college, I studied photography uh -huh. also. But you, you, you photograph a moment. And I photograph a moment, and then I incorporate it and used it in, in the collage. Um, so yes, all, these are the, the series of the death and transformation. Um, I've been taking photographs and using it in some of the collages. So do you think that um, by making some art around a difficult subject, mm -hmm. I mean, this is not a difficult set, subject in a right. deep sense. This is amusingly it's difficult. Right. 
And maybe that's playful too, the one mm -hmm. on, on, on yeah. although it can be really quite awful, the, the <laughs> business of to-do lists. But um, do you think that making art transforms the feelings? Yes, yes. It changes the feelings? Well, it changes, I mean, it changes the feelings for so many different ways. And it's not only about making it, but it's also working with imagery. Because a lot of the times I um, will, uh, when working with someone, they're not necessarily making art, but they were, they're working with an image. And in working with that image, it can help them think about something differently. They can it'll change their When you mean they're state. working with an image, they're remembering something. They're remembering something, or they're imagining something. Oh, oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it comes as an image. And it, and it comes as an image. So, you know, or it'll be the discovery. Someone will discover something um, that they didn't know was really present for them. And so what does the painting or the object then symbolize after it's done its job? Well, it's an anchor. It becomes a way of remembering. So, like this to-do list. I, have to say, I love this piece, I have to say, because it's a great reminder for me. I keep it in my studio. and. Uh, you know, other women, and not only women, men, will look at it and say, oh, that's me. I totally get this. And it's a way of remembering, do not be caught up in, in the world of doing, doing, doing. Uh, allow for being. Mm -hmm. So it often is that kind of reminder and um, a way of um, then connecting with others as well. Communicating. Well, I can see you just being as you look out your window and you take the scene of the trees, crop, a crop of trees? I'm looking for that word. <laughs> I think it's a, a group of trees has a word to it. This, this bunch of trees, you called it a family. That's nice too. I can see you glancing out the window and stopping whatever you're doing and just looking at this family of trees. And then you capture it. Yeah. Do you photograph it too? You don't need you to. You know, I did photograph a series that w when the trees were in the fog, I did. And then I used that in the, um, I'm using that in the Death and Transformation series because that fogginess really spoke to that atmosphere of the veils of uh, mm, life, death, that in between time. Hmm. I, was, I, I thought of the log that falls in the forest and becomes a whole ecosystem on its mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. transforming it becomes a home for creatures and yeah. then it eventually yeah. it, it disintegrates into the earth and becomes yeah. the earth itself but that's perhaps a little too um, literal I, well it's all part of it yes yeah we go back well I really appreciate you sharing these things with me it's a unique way of seeing things I, I appreciate very much your explanations of how you put together pieces and why they come together. It's been very interesting, and uh, thank you very much, Dale. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you good, and sharing with you. Good, wonderful. So thank you also in the um, viewing audience for sharing this half hour with us. We'll continue next week. Uh, we're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank and we're interviewing local artists and there are so, so many of them. And every one of them is slightly different or sometimes wildly different, but they all live among us. And if there's some that you think I should be interviewing, please contact me at the email below on the screen. And, and if there are questions that I'm not asking that you're really curious about and I should be asking, I'd like to know that as well. So thank you very much. I'm Jane Treger. See you next time.